everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. I am super excited because, and I know you guys are super excited about this because you requested it. I gave you a selection of different things that have been suggested to me and let you guys pick. And number three and number five were the overwhelming favorites. It doesn't mean that I'm not gonna do the rest of them, so don't don't worry. But today, we are doing the Ragged Priest Tone on Tone Jeans. I thought these would be a super, super fun project as we go transition from spring to summer, so I hope you're ready. Let's get started. All right, so you're gonna start off with two pairs of jeans, one light and one dark. So I have a pair of Levi's, and I believe this is a pair of Liz Claiborne. Both pairs of jeans should fit, and they should be slightly different colors to give a nice contrast. I'm not telling you what color they should be. They could be black or white, whatever you want. But we're gonna start with two pairs of jeans that fit. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to turn on all notifications so you don't miss any videos. Because when we hit 100K, and we're getting close, I'm gonna make a custom upcycle for one subscriber and it could be you so definitely subscribe and share this video so everyone knows all the amazing stuff going on here all right there's two ways to do this you can take the zipper of the first pair partially out at the bottom and then reattach it once the new pair is attached however I'm gonna show you how to cheat it because you guys know I'm all about the cheat and then you can decide for yourself which way is easier all right since I'm not removing my zipper I'm going to cut my first pair of jeans right above the crotch and make sure to pull those pockets up so they don't get cut off in the process. And I'm also gonna fold them in half to cut to make sure both sides are the same. And now we basically have a very, very, very short skirt. All right, for the next pair, the first thing we need to do is take the back pockets off with the seam ripper. Then we can cut them right below the pockets and right above the crotch, but higher above the crotch than the first pair because of seam allowance. And if you wanna reuse the top part of the second jeans for another pair just like this, then use a seam ripper to take out the bottom portion of the zipper rather than just cutting through it like I just did. All right, so now we have two top portions and I want you to listen to me very, very carefully. Cut your second piece, only at the zipper portion right here. Not, I repeat, not all the way up like this. Cutting it all the way up made this project so much harder, but not impossible, thank God. And now you'll remove that back piece that holds the zipper here and the zipper if you haven't already removed it. All right, for this method, we're going to be sewing the short zipper portion or fly down to the fly of the top pair. The reason cutting the crotch was such a mistake is because now I have to sew that part down to the top pair as well. But as Tim Guz says, make it work. Now let's lay everything the way it should be and add a pin at the back pocket to tell us how much of the pocket seam we wanna take apart. And I'll just use a seam ripper to take them apart to that point so that I can sew them back down later. All right, so I pin everything back in place and add a pin where I need to cut. It's going to be about a half inch below the top of the second pair. While doing this, I noticed a couple of things. First, those pockets need to be detached from the top pair on the sides. Otherwise, they're going to get cut. And the top pair is slightly bigger than the bottom pair, so it needs to be taken in. So I'm gonna take the side seams apart to release the pocket. Now I can fully move the pocket out of the way and cut off the excess. But I am not going to cut it at the zipper. I'm just gonna leave that part until after I get everything sewn down. Now we'll turn it over to the back and line up the back seams and pin or clip them together so that the seam will be exposed. These clips are super helpful for projects like this and I'll definitely put a link for these in the description box below. And I am an Amazon affiliate so if you purchase them through my link, I do get a very small commission but you don't pay any more. So it's just a small way to help my channel out and if you do, I appreciate it greatly. Now in order to make them match up, I'll take the side seam apart enough to be able to overlap the seam to compensate for the difference. Once that's done, I can keep clipping toward the zipper. Once I get close to the zipper, I'll cut to the zipper and then a half inch up. Now I can add the last clip on that side. On the other side, you want to use your scissors to snip one half inch up right next to the zipper fly on the top pair and a half inch down next to the zipper fly on the bottom pair. Then clip those together and make sure everything else is lined up. And now we're finally ready to sew them together. All right, today we're gonna be sewing on the Cellrite Fabricator. It is an amazingly gorgeous industrial sewing machine and the link is in the description box. However, this project definitely can be done on a regular sewing machine if you use a number 16 needle, just like we did for the Cardi B project. And for any project where you're going to have fraying at the seam, you always want to sew two seams right next to one another. One seam is to connect the pieces and one seam is to stop the fraying from going so far. Once those two are connected, you can sew the pockets back down.
now I'm gonna sew the two zipper flies together. This is a little tricky because you can only sew part of the way towards the zipper, then you have to go past the zipper and sew the other side. All right, so this is where this industrial sewing machine is going to save the day. I have to fix my mistake and sew the top crotch piece down to the bottom piece, but you won't make that same mistake so now we can go back to what you'll need to do you can sew this small portion down and then sew down the two flies along this edge and right now you can also add a top stitch to sew the side seams back together on each side and hey, if you get stuck, join my free Facebook group. It's just a bunch of upcyclers who help each other out when we get stuck and we can share our before and after pics and everybody will say yay and congratulate you. All right, so now we're ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna cut a nine inch section from the light colored pair of jeans. And then to deal with the size difference, I'm gonna match up the ends and cut off at that point. Now, if you're trying to follow the inspiration pick, you just keep going back and forth between the light and dark with equal sections. However, I'm just gonna use the rest of the dark blue denim on the bottom. I think I think it suits my style better, but we'll see how it turns out in the end. All right, so let's line everything up and clip those pieces together. Of course, we want our crotch pieces to line up and then we'll have to take in the sides of the lighter denim. So I'll reach inside and pin the sides so that it takes it in a bit and then clip the rest together. Once we get back to the sewing machine, we'll add a stitch down on the sides that tapers from where we added the pin back to the regular seam. Now we can sew the pieces together with two seams just like before. Since I know that they're the same size around, I'm just gonna line up the main seam and sew them together with the two seams just like we did before. And I do have to confess that I tried to get away with just doing one seam because I was tired of recording, but it started to pull away as soon as I started fraying it. So definitely, please definitely do the two seams. All right, so now I'm gonna start pulling some of the threads away to make the fray develop. You can do it with your hands or a seam ripper will help as well. What you want is this nice little fray edge like this. And I'm gonna leave the long threads for now. Oh, and also let me show you this quick tip for if you have a stain in your jeans that won't wash out. You can just add little cuts in that area and use a seam ripper to pull apart the threads. And you can also rub them together and that's even easier. Just create a little uh, frayed section that looks like it was meant to be there, but it was a stain, but now you can't see it anymore. Then just throw it in the washing machine and dryer and let the dryer do most of the work for you. Once it's dry, you can decide how much of the long threads you wanna keep. I tend to be very specific with my threads, so I'll go through and cut most of them and just leave a few. All right, so let's see how it turned out. I love these. <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest, the original pick was not necessarily my style, but the way that I did them like this, yes, this is absolutely my style. I didn't want so much tone on tone, but I did it perfectly the way I would absolutely wear these every day, all day, just like this, or maybe without the heels with some sneakers. <laughs> but yes, I absolutely love these. I have them styled with my shoulder pad t-shirt, which I also have a video for right here. And I I have them styled with my second birthday gift. I told you guys I got myself something else and it was these shoes, which are braided shoes as well. The brand is Cape Robin. I don't know particularly that brand. They weren't super expensive or anything like that, but the link is in the description box. And yeah, I'll definitely be rocking these this summer. You guys definitely share this video, make it go viral because yes, I absolutely love these. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Definitely check out some other videos as well as this t-shirt here. If you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.